started we'll start doing the presentation um scott if you want to introduce yourself a little bit sure uh, before we get into the presentation sure um, and you're hiding pieces of it right now right because I, I am and i'm going to open it up as we go okay. um if that works for everybody so okay. hi everybody uh, i'm scott sampson i'm a scrum master here in the philadelphia pennsylvania area for a, a fintech uh been in it for about uh, over 12 years um been uh have known greg for a number of years and uh have worked with him as a him being my mentor and i'm also part of his mastermind group um and yeah i mean that's i'm glad to be here glad uh greg has invited me to uh speak and uh, i'm looking forward to um hearing what everyone has to say and learning from you guys on the on the call and on that note scott just want to add to um one of the things about this 5 a.m. Master Scrum meetup is I wanted to provide an opportunity for people that want to practice anything they want to present at other things and give an opportunity for people that may not. Because, you know, when you do the the Agile Alliance or the big time shows, it's hard getting through the, the cut <laughs> and the <laughs> opportunities. So one of the things I offer to my people I have mentored and coached in the past and anyone on this meetup group that is a member is to send me a note if you want to present a topic or practice something out there in the social media world and with the meetup group with Zoom or whatever, um, please feel free to let me know and um, we'll get you rocking and rolling over here. So. That would be the idea. So, uh, and Scott is more than willing <laughs> to volunteer. So it's good. I appreciate Scott and uh, sharing, so everyone can get an idea how how this might work and everything. Um, with that, thanks, Scott. All right. And uh, should we dive in? Is everybody ready? Yeah. Um. All right. So. Thank you, everybody, for attending the Scrum Master's Relationship Value Stream. Um, the learning objectives, as you can see here for the presentation today, is who actually is included in that Scrum Master's Relationship Value Stream. So we'll identify those folks. Um, we'll talk about how you can approach those folks to build a relationship with them and what you can talk to them about um, that provides value for both parties. And... and that was kind of my third billet. I st stole my own uh, <laughs> show here. But um, yeah, we'll talk about the benefits of establishing relationships with the Smurfs, as I'm calling them. You call them Smurfs? Very close. Just a, just a small, a few letter change there <laughs> with the acronym. So um, feel free to ask, ask questions as we go through at any time. I am glad to um, answer questions as we go uh, or at the end. Either way, whatever is comfortable for the group. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So moving to the first slide. So let me uncover this. So I thought I would introduce what a value stream actually is. Um, the presentation today is called the Scrum Master's Relationship Value Stream. So I thought I would level set with what a, just an actual regular value stream is. And according to Wikipedia, as you can see, and this is a very simplified value stream, um, it's basically a bunch of steps or actions that take place from customer request to customer fulfillment and you know product going to the customer and everything in between. So you see on my diagram here, Department A processing after the customer request is received, then it goes to or Department B processing, and then ship to the customer to fulfill that request. Again, this is a very simplified version, but I thought I would share that with the group to kind of level set as to what a value stream is. And it is those steps that um, create value for the customer. All right, so let's jump right into it. So and I'm not sure what everyone's, um, you know, what, what the titles are with the group or if people are Agile coaches, Scrum Masters involved in Agile in some way. Um, but my I have a couple of questions here for the group. Um, so in the daily Scrum, right, the developers share their updates. I know that's a, that's a 
uh, maybe a bad word in the Agile uh, world. Uh, so I put my exclamation point there. So they share their updates or progress towards their sprint goal, or they answer the three questions, or they do whatever they, they do in your particular circumstance. So insert your team's approach here. And the questions I have for the group is, is it enough to make sure that the, dev that the developers are happy, um, have no impediments, are on track with their work to provide a, a great product or service for the customer? And, you know, won't we put out the best, you know, products for our customers if we're just focusing on the developer's needs? Aren't they the core? Shouldn't we be focused on them? Um, and if not, who else should we be focused on to make sure there's communication and, and collaboration and great products are being provided to the customer? So I asked, the, I asked that question of the two of the folks here. Uh, I have my yes or no here. I'll let you kind of think about that and we'll, we'll move on. All right. Can, so you, the first... can you see how many people you got on the? Uh, um, let me see. Yeah. Um, I don't know if. Let me do this real quick. I don't know if anyone's in mural at this point. I don't. I don't I see am, any. I am on mural, Mariama, but for some reason, um, I don't see the board. Hmm. What are you, when you, Mariama, when you go in, what are you seeing? Let's see. Let me just go. It, it's just a blank. Wait, hold on. Actually, I take that back. I am there. I see you. Never mind. I'm right at the slide where you're asking to vote yes or no. Okay. I see Mariama and she's the visiting train. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm a Scrum Master, go. by the way. <laughs> oh, great, great, great. Yeah. What are the roles out there as we get ready for this informal poll? Is anybody else a Scrum Master, uh, other positions in the Agile sphere, Agile coaches? Uh, Shraddha, did you say something? All right. Um, so I'm an, I'm an agile coach and a scrum master. Hey, Dave, thank you for that. Um, so yeah, and we can do this one of two ways for like these polls and different interactive things. If folks want to join the mural, awesome. That's in the, uh, I believe Greg shared that in the, um, the chat. Otherwise, um, you could probably either do it verbally, yeah, verbally where you stand or, um, and I, for some reason, I can't see the the chat. So I uh, maybe yeah, Craig, I'll let you know if I see it in the chat. I'll, I'll okay, I'm going to make so, you host soon. Okay, cool. Thanks, Greg. So I have an informal poll, um, and by show of emoji, the thumbs right, thumbs up or thumb down. Who regular who regularly speaks to anyone outside of the developers outside of like the Scrum or just in passing in the hall? Um, obviously, you know, Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches were in Scrum with them together, but how many folks actually speak with anybody else besides the developers? And if so, who would those folks be? So if you want to click on thumbs up, thumb down, let me see here if I can actually activate this. Hold on one second. Got to set this up. See if it works. It's all an experiment. Hmm. Hold on one second. Could you share the link again in the chat? The mural link? Yeah. I can sure. Let me see if I can get it right this time so everybody can participate. Any member. All right. Let's see if well, I you can... might have to send it to me. Hmm. Send it okay. to me. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and make you uh, admin, Scott. Okay. Or host. That's fine. Yeah. That, way, seem... that way you see everything. So now you should see. Uh, yep. I'm seeing other folks in there you now. You are now in control. All right. Uh, so um, you're going to have to post the link. 
I'll post the link. Okay. Post it uh, and post it to everyone. Let me see if I can find the chat. Give me one second. There we go. Just kind of appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> everyone in the meeting. Okay. So folks, the I just posted the mural uh, link. You can access that and I think you need to become a member of the um, my workspace and then you can get in like the other folks are, Mariana and others, uh, sorry, Mariama and others. We have a visiting map, visiting camera. But let me see if I have to do this. All right, I have this highlighted, voting. Start voting session. Any member, selected section. Let's see if this works this time. If not, yeah, I'm not sure why it's not working. So uh, let's see, there are no votable elements. I'm gonna try one more time and then we'll move on for the sake of time. Any member? I'm going to do entire canvas. All right, so, okay, I got it. Uh, you're the only one voting. So anybody that's in the, the mural, can you actually go to the thumbs and click on it for your vote? Does that work for everybody? If not, we'll just collect it a different way. I did. Uh, click mine, and I okay. hit, I hit done, so it became darker. Okay. So I'm not sure if you see the result or not. Let me see. I'm not seeing the results, so that's okay. Um, I'm going to end the voting session, and so let's just talk about it. So, who out there does or doesn't speak with anybody besides the developers? Does anybody? chat with other folks uh, on the development team, or is it just the developers specifically? Does anybody have any, want to share any thoughts on that? I work with um, everybody, product owners, product managers, um, RTEs. Uh, I spend a lot of time with managers all the way up to the C-suite that are concerned with agile transformations talking about uh, metrics and actually just about everything about metrics. So. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Anyone else before we move on? Uh, well, um, I usually, um, you know, as a part of my role, I connect with our business operations often. And then, of course, product managers. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's keep moving along then. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, so let me move this down a little bit. So, uh, sounds like some of the folks on the um, the meetup are speaking with others outside of just the developers on the team, which is great. Um, and one of the points I was making here with this slide is, hey, you know, if you're only speaking to one part of the the Scrum Masters relationship value stream stream, the Smurfs, you might be missing out on opportunities to collaborate and develop, you know, great products, great teammates yourself. And I have the uh, the arrow here. You are here, <laughs> just speaking with the development folks, and maybe not some other folks here in this the Smurf, the Smurfs. Um, any questions on that? Okay.
All right. So another participation item. Um, and I just put a number of different departments, different roles on this slide. Um, so again, let me see if I can set up a voting. Maybe make it work this time. Let's experiment. All right. And I used to be able to do the selected sections. Let me try that again. Okay. Let me do this. One per, well, vote per person. Hmm. Still says I'm the only one voting. So, okay. Um, for some reason, that's not working right. So, right. what does try the, voting the whole thing or something? Yeah, I'll try it one more time. Let's see. I did test this, and it was working previously. Oh, who can? Okay, I'm voting. Okay, you're good. But any member, and then it's all these things, and then yep. let's do entire canvas this time. Huh. All right. That still says I'm the only one voting. Um, can anybody else? cast a vote maybe it's just saying that to me but is anybody I else i think it might be because we don't have edit access so we have something i have um something on top of the screen saying view only and then i have another question saying um as for edit access so i did that but okay i still have you on all right yes yeah let me let me look at something real quick All right, I just made Michelle a member. So Michelle, you should be able to... to vote. So how do I vote? You should be able to go into the mural now and vote. Um, so what you would do was click on... So the question is, who do you think you should talk to in the Scrum Master's Relationship Value Stream? Um, I put a bunch of different departments and groups on here. Um, these may or may not be part of the value stream, the Scrum Master's Relationship Value Stream, but I wanted to get the group's thoughts as to who you might think of um, speaking to outside of the development group. And Mich Michelle, you're the only one that I saw that came I through. It still says view only, but I'm refreshing. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that might help. Oh, you now I have to go in again. I just approve you for edit access, Michelle. Okay, can you approve me as well, please? Um, I don't. I didn't see a request come th through from you. Okay. Uh, Mariama, can you if you see that? Can you request it and then and anybody else? And I can add you as well. If you okay. access the mural link and just request um, access, I can approve it here. Okay. And you device. may have to double check that you're not looking at the Zoom screen because <laughs> that could be deceptive too. Like you. Thinking you're in mural, but you're actually looking yeah. at the, the Zoom screen. <laughs> Hi, this is Muma. I, I, I too just see the view only. I was able to go in, but I only see the view. Okay. Did you? And Michelle has requested access. All right, Michelle, I, I approved you again. Um. Looks like Mariama. you've got a couple people now on there now, so that's good. Yeah, uh, Mariama, I don't see yeah. they can get in here, but they may not be able to interact with the yeah. the voting. Yeah. Um, exactly. So why don't we do this? Um, does anybody have any thoughts about who you think you should talk to before we move on, and then we'll introduce the Smurfs to the group? and topics you can ver that's... verbal or chat either way yeah i think as many of that you've listed on the slide as possible to be to have a holistic view 
Okay. Anybody else? I like that holistic view part. <laughs> All right, we will move on then. So let's talk about the Smurfs. Um, so somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was Dave, that they talked to product. Uh, so product would be part of the Scrum Master's relationship value stream. Um, and I broke it down by position in a department such as product and what you can actually approach them to talk to them about um, that would add value for both you, them, and the team. Um, so I think it might have been mentioned earlier, but obviously you can talk to them about their their planning. So, you know, they're thinking the product managers at the high strategic level. So they're thinking about the sprint quarter and year and what they want to deliver, uh, given their the client and the company's um, feedback about what they want to do. They're thinking about the product roadmap, um, some other high level things like the vision for the product, any enhancement and improvements. Uh, they might even be reaching out about and trying to implement, you know, user feedback um, regarding points of pain. Uh, you see bug or defect tickets come in. Uh, user needs and client insights, so things that the users want and, you know, things that the client might be thinking about ahead of time down the road. Um, they're also most likely working with the product owner regarding, uh, you know, prioritization of features enhancements. And you could talk to them about how, how do they um, prioritize? Do they use, you know, the typical highest, high, medium, low, lowest, or, you know, some other thing? And is it driven by client or the business or both? Um, you can also talk to them about communications. Like how, how do they, you know, how often do they meet with the CEO? How often do they meet with the executive team? What are those interactions like? Um, what are the takeaways? How can you help uh, with those takeaways as a scrum master or other agile um, professional? Um, do they talk to the, to the development team? How often are they present for that team if, if need be? And of course, customers, and we kind of touched on that above. Um, and then finally, collaboration. Um, again, how are they working with the dev team to help the dev team be successful? Um, are they communicating clearly about the goals um, for the product so that the dev team can work on those? Uh, effectively, prioritization comes into play. And are, are they also talking to uh, marketing, sales, and customer support? You know, folks that you may not initially think about the product manager to be talking to, but, you know, marketing, sales, and customer support are all going to be touching. They're all touch points for the client in some fashion. Um, so it might be good to see if the, you know, if the product manager is uh, having some sort of regular communication with the, with those groups to make sure that their, uh, their vision uh, for the sprint quarter and year is, is still valid and up to date given feedback from those groups. Any questions there? Okay. All right. Continuing with the product team as part of the SMURVs. Um, of course, you may want to talk to the product owner. You might have, as a Scrum Master, you might have a really close relationship or want to develop a closer relationship with the product owner. Um, you know, this person is going to be kind of more on the ground with you, um, you know, involved with, you know, like I have here, backlog management, going through that on a regular basis and figuring out the timing and prioritization um, for what the client wants, what the company can actually deliver, uh, et cetera. Uh, they're going to be writing user stories or something similar um, or helping write those with the dev team or the product manager and product analyst. Uh, sprint planning, obviously they'll be involved with that. Um, teeing up those, you know, the, the tickets and the, um, the work for the next sprint, covering that with the team. How do they do that? Um, how do they determine tickets and the work for the next sprint? 
and um, the timing and part of the are they actually um, thinking about sprinkles and trying to help them put those into place to make it clear for the team as to what they're trying to achieve for each sprint? Um, retrospectives, so you can talk to them about that. Um, what's their approach to that? Do they do they take that feedback from the development team in retrospectives or anybody else in there? And you know, how do they how do they utilize that feedback? Um, do they act upon it? Uh, that kind of thing. How do they look to solve and make the team's lives easier? And then, of course, product vision. Once again, just like the product manager, um, you know, they're going to be working closely with the product manager on that for the long-term goals of the product, and that's something that they could share with you uh, as a scrum master to round out your expectations and experience in that regard for what's coming and how you can prepare the team and set up, help them set the team up for success. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, the other part of a product team would be the product analyst. Um, this person is going to be really focused on, you know, working with the client or customer, figuring out what their needs are and documenting them in some fashion. Um, so in speaking with them and setting up time with them, you can actually talk about, hey, what's their, how often do they meet with the client? How are requirements gathered? Are they speaking with the client directly or through another medium in between? Um, and do they do anything with that, you know, analysis for future, uh, future sprints and future product development? They might be doing user research, so you, you could ask them about, hey, what methods are they using for that? What's their approach? And then once they get that data from the user research, how do they apply that? Does that go into their requirements? Um, where does that go and how is it used? Data analysis, kind of self-explanatory, how is it collected and analyzed? I think that ties right in with the requirements. And then are they also speaking with other groups? Kind of like when I talked about the product manager, you know, are they reaching out to and working closely with the product manager, uh, the product owner, but also others, you know, the dev team, are they working closely with them for clarifying questions and sprint planning um, or outside of sprint planning? They're working closely to make sure requirements are written clearly so the developers know um, what to do and there's no rework or minimal rework. Um, and other stakeholders, just like with the product manager talking with marketing, sales, and um, customer service, who are they reaching out to to get that holistic picture for what the the client wants and what the messages are to the clients and expectations? All right. So the next group in the Scrum Master's relationship value stream is quality assurance. And I have to say, I do, when I saw this slide, I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> With this guy sticking out here. Um, so quality assurance, what can the Scrum Master talk to, or you know, discuss with quality assurance management, quality assurance director, et cetera? Um, you can find out, you know, are they, what kind of quality metrics are they, you know, collecting? Um, and what's success mean to them? Are they trying to, you know, have certain test automation goals and try to automate a percentage of their testing um, versus manual testing? How is that going? Um, and I just mentioned test automation here, implementation in the current level. You could talk to them about testing strategies. Uh, are they doing how much acceptance testing are they doing, regression testing, other testing such as exploratory testing? Um, and what's the, you know, what's the percentage of each one of these things that they're doing for a release uh, and post-release? Test environments, um, that sometimes can be uh, a topic that, test environments can be tricky sometimes, <laughs> I'll just say that. So, you know, talking, talking to them about that experience what are they using to test? Um, how 
is it easy to test in that environment or are there a lot of different groups and people in there and data and it's tricky? Um, that goes along with management and stability of the test environment and perhaps how you can help them with getting their own environment would be something you could discuss with them. And then finally, defect management. So for defects, and I'll even include bugs in here, although they're not the same thing typically, um, how are they identifying those? Um, are they prioritizing them based on the product manager and product order's feedback that some, some things have to be done immediately versus maybe a month from now? Uh, it's a little long, but, uh, and how are they resolving those? And how is that going? I'm sure those were those would be um, topics that would resonate with quality assurance management. Any questions from the group at all so far? I see somebody flying around in there. I like that. All right. I do Let's, have a question. Go ahead, Mariama. So with this um, uh, suggestion, would that work better best with uh, if the company is using safe? Or, um, or you just individually as a as a scrum master, like the sole scrum master um, within the organization. I, I was coming at it from you know be, just from the scrum master role, um, kind of agnostic of your approach, whether it's safe or other. Um, Greg, you have a lot of experience with safe. Do you see anything that might lend itself more to a safe experience, a safe environment versus other? As far as quality assurance? Mary Emma, were you just talking about quality assurance? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, safe is n nothing, any, anything different per se but there is more uh, architectural discretion like if you do uh, in your PI planning your quarterly planning uh, a lot of this items which should be brought up during that session too okay does that make sense yes thank you okay yeah thank you for the question Mariama and if anybody else has questions feel free to uh, ask at any time All right, so quality assurance testers is another group you can speak with, right? Part of the quality um, area. These and, are and hey, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things is when we do these, I, I, I think about the Scrum team, and the idea is that QA is part of the Scrum team too. So yes. Um, it That's also a, may be, uh, you might think of it, it might be a separate integration test group sometimes with the larger deployments that might be out there also. Awesome. Yeah, that I like that, Greg. And that's that's the approach that I take is all, all of these folks that we're speaking of are part of the team, if you will. Um. But yeah, back to um, the quality assurance tester. So these folks are going to be on the ground, kind of like the scrum master and kind of like the product owner. Um, and they're obviously very busy. Uh, there might be some testers in the crowd here, you know, attending tonight. So you can attest to that, but plenty to talk to them about, you know, regarding test planning, execution, again, defects. How is that coming back through? Is that, you know, is that a separate, Ticket type in JIRA, like how are they approaching that? What's the priority, et cetera? Um, we talked about manual and automated testing previously, also exploratory testing. So are they doing these things, any of these? And how is that going? Where would perhaps, where do they need help that you could assist with? Again, test coverage, how much is, you know, manual versus automation and how much of the product is being tested. That's an, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, is there a percentage of the product that's not tested? That percentage might scare a few people, <laughs> depending on what it is. Yeah. Um, failed tests, um, defect tracking and dev follow-up. So are they, you know, when something fails, are they 
the going back to the dev team and asking more questions and is that a good you know cyclical relationship between both groups so they can get their questions answered hey scott yeah. double check to see if you don't have any more people signing okay. on late maybe you have some uh under participants let me see here where might would be I in the waiting room towards the bottom usually in the waiting room um let me look might be on the bottom of your screen too like it'll say participants just click on that and i'm it trying to show i'm trying to find my that's right you got an app you get a map yeah <laughs> and it's i don't I don't see where that is supposed to be. It's not popping up for me, but I'm trying right, to kind of I'll, I'll double check. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have the ability because I gave you. <laughs> you gave me all the power, and I can't well, use it. <laughs> okay, let me let me do one. Uh, no, if I do that, I'll unhook you. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, they're too late. <laughs> Gotta get yeah. early. I was looking to see if I could find the uh, the bar real quick. Let me see. Give me a moment. You probably have a bunch of monitors, don't you? I do. Yeah, they're all hiding everywhere. Yeah, for some you reason, might I have can't to escape it, full full screen or something. Let me do that. Um, I mean, you can stay in mural. You just got to get out full full screen for yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Let me see if I can. All right, I'm I'm hitting escape and nothing's happening, so I think I'm out. Um, that's okay. Just go back to what sorry. you're doing. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So, um, back to quality assurance here. Um, let me see. So, yep, we talked about the relationship between the testers and dev to make sure that's a good relationship. Um, and then feedback. Do they have feedback regarding the developer's work? So, you know, perhaps there's a quality issue where tickets are being moved along before they're really uh, unit tested or, you know, other things. Uh, so it's, I think it's always good to check in with the testers to see, you know, if they're seeing a pattern with maybe uh, code quality. All right, moving on to DevOps. Um, let me ask this: Does anybody work with it? Does anybody communicate regularly with the DevOps group in their company? Well, I used to be a scrum master for a DevOps team. Nice. <laughs> that was Michelle. So, yeah. okay. Oop. There we go. Marva wants to come in. I just got an alert. Okay. <laughs> so maybe I'm getting alerts, Greg, when folks want to come in. I don't know. Okay. She can uh, <laughs> all right. So um so Michelle's gonna keep me honest here. And uh but so I think the DevOps groups are they're good groups to um speak with as well. Uh, I do I've done work with DevOps groups regarding um you know, release retrospectives, uh, working agreements with DevOps groups. And it's such an interesting area to learn about. Um, and sometimes people don't realize like they're the kind of the last stop on the on the train, if you will, for the release. So it's good to shine a light on them. Um, so I included them here as part of the SMURVs um, and the DevOps manager is up first. And Michelle, I invite any feedback you have on what you can talk to them about, but I have, um, you know, their process. So the whole DevOps process from planned, you know, plan, build, test, deploy, and monitor the software. They're responsible for all that stuff. And that's a lot people don't realize, but it's a, that's a huge part of a company's functioning as far as software deployment. Um, they're also responsible for infrastructure. So, you know, like I have listed here, servers, networks, um, the cloud, <laughs> um, 
So a lot you could talk about there with different cloud products and what's happening. Um, automation, once again, um, they're another group that can really rely on automation to make their lives easier. And so you can talk to them about, you know, are they doing that to build and deploy their software? Um, and that would be part of the, the CI CD pipeline. Security, um, I know that sometimes DevOps is part of, you know, the information security groups at different companies. So they're trying to make sure that, you know, vulnerability uh, is being looked at, penetration testing, um, what are the access controls that um, are in place so that people can get what they need, but don't get what they shouldn't have or don't need, right? <laughs> so uh, they're responsible for that too. Um, this is a good one here. So teamwork. How are the DevOps groups working with the dev teams to, um, again, have that cyclical, cyclical back and forth relationship? Um, DevOps is relying on the development teams to provide typically what they need for a smooth release. Um, and, if, and if that's not provided, the release might go a little bit sideways and then, you know, people have long weekends. So <laughs> it's good to have that that relationship with the, de the devs and make sure that the DevOps are getting, the DevOps scripts are getting what they need. So you can talk to them about that, how that's going. And it kind of falls into this one here, special instructions. So sometimes if a particular thing needs to be in a release, um, making sure that that's being provided on a, on a regular basis um, somehow for each release so that, you know, the DevOps folks aren't spending weekends trying to fix a release when something was missed that they weren't provided. Uh, Michelle, what feedback do you have? Did, what have you seen in your experiences with working with a DevOps team? Does this resonate? And could is there anything yeah. to add here? All of that does. And I also have seen um, where DevOps person is embedded in the dev team. Mm. But sometimes, especially when they have special projects, you know, to make things easier and get quicker turnaround. But sometimes that DevOps work can really pile up and we have to wait a long time like for the circuit builds or something like that. Um, so I've seen DevOps incorporated into the dev teams and even sometimes architects. Architects more of a, um, you know, not there every day, but maybe every week or um, twice a week. But I've seen DevOps in, in the teams like every day embedded in. That's great. That's a good approach to have those cross-functional teams. I think it speeds things up. <laughs> hey, my Scott, opinion, do, you, do you include like customer service in your DevOps? Um, customer service, like, yeah, like- um, Like operations like a, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like, like a ticketing like, system where people put yep. in, yeah, like a, a service request. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and there's more that. DevOps here. Okay, you got more. <laughs> what do you got more? Let me see what you got more on the DevOps. Let me see. Share your cards. This here we go. Paper. Here's, a, here's okay. the card. Here we uh, go. So for the DevOps engineers, uh, also another group in DevOps you can speak with. Um, I mentioned infrastructure previously. You can talk to them about that. I mentioned continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. How much of that is automated? You can talk to them about that. Um, risk and downtime. And here's the, <laughs> like I was talking about before, rollbacks <laughs> of releases, um, blue-green deployments, et cetera. Um, trying to avoid rollbacks and making sure everybody's communicating. Uh, the monitoring tools we talked about um, regarding how the infrastructure is performing and how apps are performing and addressing those. And then um, security measures. Um, and I mentioned some of these before, penetration testing, vulnerability scanning. So Greg, it looks like I might need to add the, uh, the service desk queue for, uh, issues because DevOps groups can definitely, you know. Well, that, well, that was it, the original, that's always my debate. That's the original philosophy behind DevOps and everyone does it CICD, but DevOps is development and operations. Yeah, coming together, right? And uh, just one example, I had a group 
where the operation team had to do a bunch of stuff, but the dev team had built a little button on their code to recycle or recache or whatever they had to do with the accounts. And I had mentioned as a scrum master to the operations group, could you use that reset? But oh, you're like, yeah, we would love to have that reset button, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it was that, just that conversation um, between the dev and the operations people to allow them to make the operations people's job a lot easier too. And vice yeah. versa, like setting up a system where the lessons learned from operations can get back into the development side, right? For For stories and things like that. To improve the overall process. That is a great, those are great points, Greg. Thank you for those. All right. So it's time to move on to the developer team, uh, the team of developers. Um, discussion topics with development management. So, um, you know, this is more around planning, I think, so project timelines, how team members are allocated across the teams and the company, and how is communication um, with those teams and team members. What's team engagement and motivation look like? Are they, you know, are they collaborating well together? If not, why? And that's perhaps something you could um, help them manage or work with them. Uh, conflict could also be talked about how that's handled. Uh, if you're an agile shop, talking to the management team about that, what's their thought about it? Um, do their teams understand what to do? And is, is there an opportunity there for you to work with them to increase knowledge around agile approaches? One of my favorite topics, technical debt. Um, is it tracked and is it managed? Uh, is it actually acted upon? Um, and what are the steps in place to try to avoid technical debt with the teams? Uh, someone mentioned metrics earlier, velocity, defects, many others. Most likely, I just put a couple of uh, examples there that you could talk to the development management team about. And training and career development for the team. Is there anything in place for the team to develop themselves? What's that look like? Is there a need for that in some way? And that really could be just something as simple as a center of excellence for development, you know, any, any educational opportunity. All right. Uh, developers. Um, and some of the stuff you'll talk about in Scrum, but this, you know, if you do meet with them individually, one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes you get, there's more time to chat in depth about these things, you know, in regards to their points of pain, roadblocks, any support they need, any challenges around the tools or architecture or code that they see, is code quality what it should be, are there training opportunities or issues? Are they contributing to a positive culture on the team? What are they doing? This this. This may be something that they're not necessarily thinking about all the time. Some people may, but some people may not. So making them asking this question could bring some enlightenment there as to how they could foster that environment, a positive environment. Uh, again, Agile, how is it working for them? Do they have any challenges? Are there any opportunities that you could take care of for them or educate them about? And... Um, I do ask about career goals and aspirations. I think that's just a, it's good because you want to learn more about them as a person, what their goals are, but you can also probably support them in some way um, through regular follow-ups um, and that kind of thing. If they want to, you know, have somebody follow up with them on a regular basis to keep them on track with their own goals. Um, you could do that from a, you know, Scrum Master Agile Coaching perspective. I just recently had someone who, uh just finished their CSM training or got their certification. So they were asking me about what am I going to do to be a scrum master? So it was, it, it, you know, I gave some pointers, what you can practice while you're in as a developer to get ready, even though you're not quote a scrum master, but you can gain and contribute like a scrum master would during the session. Right. That's great. 
Okay, let's go to the benefits of talking to all these people about all of these topics, or even some of them. Um, you might recognize this graphic here, if anybody can name that game. Uh, <laughs> but benefits unlocked by talking to all these groups and asking them about some or all of those you know, topics. Um, you know, you're making sure everybody works together well, right, across the board, yourself with those people, you know, within teams, um, just trying to drive better outcomes for the product or service you're providing. Um, you're also making sure that folks are aligned with the goals of the product manager, the product organization, the company, um, with the goals of the product. So everybody's on the same page with what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and it kind of moves into the next one too, making sure everybody's aligned with the goals of the organization, knowing where the organization wants to go. Uh, and the vision uh, helps with you knowing that helps kind of steer the teams uh, and the Smurfs in that right direction and help them get there. It also helps deliver high quality products that are easy to deploy, right? Going back to uh, DevOps. Uh, you can also learn more about your customers. So, you know, Scrum Masters might, might not get an opportunity to get out there and talk to customers that often. Um, so talking with, you know, the product analysts and the product groups and others, you know, even marketing and sales, perhaps, if you want to step out outside of the Smurfs as I've identified them, could be, could be good for the Scrum Master. Okay. More benefits. Um, you can see how your company's value stream operates, right? Not only from the Smurf perspective, but just, you know, I showed a very simple value stream earlier, but you can, that can really be, and I'm sure people on this call have seen, like, it can really be blown out with a lot of different departments from customer request to customer fulfillment. And just learning about that will make you as a Scrum Master, I think, um, a better partner um, with everybody you work with. We talked about fostering collaboration, innovation, and goal completion. Um, it also helps people be accountable for their work uh, with clear goals. Um, folks can gain, gain flexibility and responsiveness to client needs, other team needs, team members' needs. And everybody feels valued and appreciated. Um, so. I put leading to an increase in retention, but it's also an increase in morale. Um, and find, maybe even finding out, you know, if there are issues with morale, how can that be addressed? Um, and hey, finally, hey, yeah, go ahead, Greg. Um, we'll do your final and I'll come back. And I'll ask sure. Question. Um, last but not least, and I kind of alluded to it, um, you can just learn so much more about your company by talking to all these different groups and asking these questions, that again, you can just become this, you know, kind of like a, just a, like a, almost like a super scrum master or super agile coach, right? Where you have a, a knowledge about every part of your company and you become very valuable to your company. So, and it increases your knowledge and keeps things fresh and exciting for you too. So um, I think that's a huge benefit for the scrum master as well. Greg, go ahead. Um. With all these Smurfs running around, right? <laughs> um, I just picture my mind blue Smurfs. Um, how, how do you avoid death by meeting? I don't know if you cover that in one of your slides or. I don't like cover that. death by meeting, um, but I can I can respond to that. So that'd be cool. Um, Appreciate that. So what you techniques know what do you use? Right. We'll yeah. Take... Yeah, so I try to not overburden them with meetings. So, you know, you got to figure out the cadence that works well for them and yourself. Um, for my personal approach, I try to meet with everybody once a month um, and talk to them about any topics that are obviously hot at that time sure. or anything, they, any agenda they have. But I also have, you know, a list of items that we also can touch upon uh, and what's going on in those areas. Um, you know, if the if I'm not sure if it's valuable to me every day. Yeah. But what <laughs> either, about the people outside part? the what about the people like outside the development group? So, yeah, 
I notice a tendency when a lot of scrum masters that decide they have to go to every meeting on the planet. And when you talk about DevOps people and customer marketing and all these people, they're like, oh, especially in, if you're doing safe, big time and safe. Mm-hmm. They feel like they have to attend every tech meeting, every, and if you're looking at, like, I worked with a very large group that had like eight different trains, 40 teams. And sometimes the scrum masters felt like they had to attend every daily stand up or every stand up. They were invited to every one of them. So, so what? Any any thoughts on on that aspect of this? I, yeah, I mean, I think it comes to pr- down to prioritization. Um, you know, for the most, it's a couple of things. So, the highest priority. Um, or and or the most needed projects probably could use the Scrum Master to learn more about it or be there to guide the team. Um, mm-hmm. But you could also do kind of what my you could implement my approach where you're you're catching up with folks once a month, um, okay. and so you can stagger it a little bit. But you're still getting you know if you have your topics that you want to talk to them about, you can still get caught up to speed. So you can kind of balance those very high priority or much needed teams that need you where you need to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, if, if you're not there in the scrum, you know, meet, meet with them on a regular cadence once a month, twice a month, whatever works for the, the group. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah. We got about 10 more minutes. All right. I can do it. Okay. All right. Cool. So, once you put all of that into place, if you remember my very simple uh, SMERV uh, diagram previously, where I said you are here above development because folks may be only talking with the developers. You know, if you're doing all these things that we just went through, or even some of them, you are you are now here, uh, and you're you're t- you're the arrows are going in between each group because you're you're in there talking to everybody, and then you know you see these circular um, arrows here, you can get these teams talking with each other as well just by doing this because you're going to start connecting the dots, right? Um, Can anybody tell me why the UR here is so large, this dot? All right. Oh, Mariama, were you going to take a stab? I was going to. Go ahead. Um... (laughs) I don't want to say you're the glue. However, you have a larger, it's almost like a, you know, you're zooming out, if you will, um, to see the picture holistically. I mean, that's when we, that's what it's come to mind. Okay. Anyone else? Maryam is on the right track. I, I made that larger because, yeah, by by, you know, Speaking to all these different groups, DevOps, you know, quality assurance, and having them speak to each other, you're you're building your, you know, your relationship, your status in the company, the way you can partner. You're you're becoming like a larger, more important piece to the company because you your knowledge is growing so much. So I made sure this is expanded here to show that that growth you're getting by doing this. That's good. I thought you were doing it just because my eyes are getting <laughs> But no, that makes that makes perfect sense. All right. So uh, we're getting towards the end here. So thinking about your own situations. Let me get this out of the way. Here are the smurves we talked about. And I don't know if anybody's going to be able to do this. I was going to do a dot voting thing so we can try. But if not, we can just shout them out too. Um you know, and thinking about what we've just talked about, what what Smurfs would be most valuable for you to talk with tomorrow? Like, where can you start building those relationships to learn more about the company, learn more about where you could help out um, with those different items, build relationships? Let me uh, let me see if I can set it up. Smurfs. All right, I'm going to try to set it up and see if it works. And as we do this, and Scott's doing great because he's going through this, this is one of the reasons why we do this 
meetup too. So if you want to do an interactive session, feel free to use the, the, the meetup group as a practice group for running through it, get a bunch of people together and setting that up too. Because there's always settings. I mean, you hear, you see me do the sound and the and the links and all that kind of stuff. So there's always uh, cases where it makes your life fun. And every one of these apps are different. You may be doing mural one day, mirror, m mural, mural, whatever. Uh, the next time, or you're doing uh, a Microsoft product. Who knows, right? M mural or Miro or. Yeah, Miro, yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like the voting's working. So does anybody want to volunteer who they think they might want to speak with in the future to to build that relationship and you know that could lend itself to ooh, I see a raised yeah. hand. Yeah. So I can I am interested in um discussing the stakeholder relationship um um that was the stakeholder engagement. Um but, but I don't have an, a topic or idea in mind specifically. But, uh... Uh, were you, uh, did you want to provide something about a, like the stakeholder relationship or did you have a question about that? No, no, in the future, um, mm. to talk about, about, I hope I got the question right. Was it, I would bet you to asking about a mural board. Yes. Okay. I thought that yeah, they, because we are running out of time, I thought that there is going to be a leftover topic that you would like to cover on the relationship management. So, so sorry, I misunderstood. No, 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 that's okay. I, I just, I was asking. He uh, has a this, Q and A at the end too. Yeah, so yeah. Can... I was, I was asking on this slide, like of the Smurfs that we covered, um, who would you, who would be most valuable for you to talk to in the near term? That was the question for the group. Um, Mariama, you had a your hand up. Yes, it would be the product manager yeah. for me. Okay. And why do you say that? Just to get it, um, to learn more about the, the product itself and uh, the vision and, you know, the focus. Okay. Besides the product owner. All right. Anyone else? I would even I, take I, it the line managers too but they're not on your list <laughs> i can always include them you know oh, okay merv plus <laughs> i was going to say both what uh mary mary Emma and greg said so um uh, from the product manager to get um more information on the product itself and then for the um the manager of the developers, which we call them the engineering manager. Okay. Uh, them. Because awesome. I, I noticed um, sometimes I'm seeing that the product owner, which we work really closely with, is reporting in to the engineering manager. Hmm. Yeah. So that can make a difference. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> which is weird, I know, but... All right. Okay, communication tips. You guys know these already, I'm sure. Listen actively, be open to feedback, work collaborative, collaboratively with the Smurfs when you're speaking with them. Um, set up time on their calendar if they are amenable to that. That's how, that's how I approach it typically. There's no secret potion to doing that. I just ask them if we can set up time to talk about certain things and Normally it's a yes, uh, so take that advice as you will. Yeah, one thing on that with the calendars, just my own little tip trick is that my Smurfs that I know that I want to talk to, I actually stalk them in Outlook. <laughs> I have their calendars in there, so before I even go ask them, before, so I already kind of know when they're available when I go ask the question. Nice. So, I, I set it up. I look at my calendar, their calendar, kind of like, hey, I see Tuesday, you know, you got a half hour. Is this something we could do, you know? And, and, and but I just look at that because if you ask the question, their calendar is totally booked. 
it just frustrates them. So I try to get that. Or I'll say, hey, I see your calendar is like really full. Do you want to, I'll let, you know, you want to pick a time and set up a meeting what's convenient to you. And then I'll hand it off to them to do that too. So um, just a little calendar trick that I have that I use. Nice. Nice, nice. And I forgot to mention to mention the benefits when you're trying when you're speaking with the Smurfs. You know, what what, what outcome do you want to get from it? Uh, make sure they will benefit from it as well. <laughs> That'll be easy yeah. To get yourself. an agenda or yeah. See, you know what you might want to talk about, what they want to talk about. Oh, definitely. All right, we're at the end. We made it. There you go. Q and A time. And anybody on social media, sorry for any any uh technical difficulties because it was kind of interesting for a while there i just want to say thank you guys uh hope to see you again i have to run i actually have to go grab a birthday gift before the store is closed <laughs> oh go go <laughs> to the store gift. all right thank you <laughs> bye yeah, thank thanks you. michelle um anybody have any extra questions for scott or the activity i know you brought up stakeholders Thank you for the hand clap, uh, Mariama. Appreciated. This is my first time through this presentation, so thanks for uh, sticking with me. <laughs> yeah, one thing about stakeholders in this MERVs is um, sometimes the people can create barriers between you and the stakeholders. Um, and it takes a while to break those barriers down because mm -hmm. they're protective, right? They, they're of their domain. <laughs> so even yep. though you might want to have a conversation with them, they may have, well, why are you asking? And they get really defensively questions and um, things like that. So it, it may, I would also advise team up too. So, like, if you want to meet with stakeholders, you know, inquire with the product owner how would how they might want to handle that, or a product manager, right? And say, hey, well, we can do it together. Can I join you in a conversation? You know, uh, see how they do things and, and things like that too. So, don't hesitate that you don't have to be by yourself. Good advice. Hi, this is Muma. Um, this is my first time joining. The, hey, the welcome. Meeting. Oh, thank you. I think I should turn my camera. Yeah, this is my first time. Thank you so much. Um, Scott, I couldn't tell that this was your first time running through the, the slides. So. Oh, <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you for that feedback. I, I appreciate it. Um. No worries. It was great. Um, so I, I am actually new to Scrum, so I'm not practicing as yet, but I... I'm very interested. So I, I was going through Meetup to see anything specific to uh, Scrum Masters, and I, I came across this presentation today, and I quickly joined it. So, so, Great. so this is good information for someone who's transitioning from uh, 14 years of, uh, you know, program management into Scrum. Okay. Um, definitely an interesting field. Uh, so I look forward to joining more. Um, of your talks great great thank you for thank you for attending and if no, you ever no. want to talk about your transition from pro project management to scrum we can do something with that too and yes, then uh, not to plug my the 5 a.m master scrum show but there is a a linkedin youtube facebook podcast um that will include this when I download it, so I'll make it into a podcast for people to, and I'll double check to see how the social media version uh, showed up because I think it lost sound there for a little bit. So I might re repost it. Um, okay. So we got a lot of stuff out there, and, and ask questions on the on the meetup page too. So if sure, you have a question, comment, good. or a topic that you're interested in, let us know. Yes, and I'm also open to mentorship. So looking for mentors, um, anyone who's available, I am open. Thank you so much. Okay. Awesome. Anything else for tonight? Or today, wherever you are? Just a warning, though. If, if, if I was your mentor, 
I would make I would I would get you to do a presentation online. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I did that to Scott as we <laughs> talked about it. He's like, oh, I want this goal. I'm like, well, you know what? Let's practice. Let's get you yeah. up there. I do not mind in my current role. I do a lot of presentations, so I'm okay. I'm open to transferring my skills anytime. So okay, good, awesome, <laughs> thanks. Uma, let's connect on LinkedIn. Sure, let's do that. Thank you. That's a good point. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you want to connect. Be glad to do that. We'll do. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank All you, right. Greg, for the great presentation. Very informative. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It was a lot of a lot of different takes of what a scrum master should expand their vision and their their smurfs, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think that was good. That was a good way of saying, hey, it's not just the team and it's not just this little world. It's it's a lot of different things. So I think a That's lot right. of new scrum masters would benefit from. Um, watching your presentation and listen to what you had to say too. Great. Okay. All right. All right then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.